Hello, my name is John Gunderson. I'm speaking from Charleston, South Carolina. And based on my profile as an old white guy, as you can see, from a working middle class family, as a young Republican in college, as someone who enlisted in the US Army and served in Vietnam, I should be a solid Trump supporter. In fact, for five decades in the US government, working with the government, I've headed counterterrorism teams, I've opened up embassies. In all this time, I believed, and I still believe in those values that we've all supported, a mixed market economy, the rule of law, fairness in, domestically, internationally supporting allies, opposing dictators. However, sadly, we have in the White House today a man who does not support these values, in fact, does not even understand these values. Of course, we cannot blame Donald Trump for all the ills of society today, for the pandemic or racial and economic inequality, unemployment. However, by his rhetoric, which has been divisive, by his lack of empathy and his lack of belief in the rule of law, he has exacerbated all these issues. Let's look at some of the things he claims. One, that he's a friend of the military. Think about this. He got five deferments to avoid Vietnam. He has appointed generals to his cabinet, quickly fired them as, as soon as they've had any independence or professionalism. He has mocked war veterans like John McCain, a true war hero and gold star fathers and mothers. Think about law and order, he claims to support. He has encouraged his followers to rough up demonstrators. He used tear gas to clear out Lafayette Square so he could have a publicity stunt holding up a Bible in front of a church. How about a friend of business? Well, he's appointed the richest cabinet in history. He has had his daddy use his money to bail him out various failed enterprises or a friend of the working man. Here's a guy who brags about never having gotten any dirt under his fingernails. Here's a guy who brags about never having cha changed a diaper. So much as a friend of the working man or a working woman. Now, this is not unusual uh, for him. Now, let's look at another area, too long neglected, and that is foreign policy. Donald Trump, has made the United States neither loved nor hated, but largely ignored. He, he claims we have great respect in the world. Just not true. Look at any of the polls, we are at our lowest point in terms of respect that we've ever done. North Korea is now lobbing missiles over Japan and South Korea. This is a person that Donald Trump said he loved. Iran is again rich, enriching uranium. Russia is still occupying Ukraine, it is still killing journalists, it is still hacking into our elections, and it now may be even funding killing Americans in Afghanistan. How about China, his good friend Xi? Well, China is locking up millions of Uyghur Muslims, and he's being encouraged by Donald Trump. China is destroying democracy in Hong Kong, threatening invasion in Taiwan. Now, this has been in the past, Republican and Democratic administrations have opposed these things. They have created institutions together that have promoted American interests, NATO, the Marshall Plan, World Bank. When we disagreed in those institutions, we tried to reform them. Now, Donald Trump leaves these institutions, leaving us more isolated in the world. So now we are faced with a choice on November 3rd. A lot of Republicans may say, well, at least he's not, he may be, not be a saint, but he's not a socialist. Well, I wonder what that really means. Look at all former presidents of the United States, Republican and Democratic. Take the Republicans, the most recent ones, George Sr., George Bush Jr., candidates McCain, Romney have all strongly opposed this president. In the past, Republicans 
did so and they were independent. Now they are enablers of Donald Trump. They are enablers of his xenophobia, his growing authoritarianism. A final point. In the 1930s, the same thing we heard about uh, the, the uh, socialist in power, staying out of European wars, appeasing Adolf Hitler. This was the America Firsters. You remember that name? It's being used again. Luckily, we had a conservative, Winston Churchill, who opposed the Hitler and Hitlerism and Nazism because it was a threat to democracy. It was a threat to Western civilization. Today, Donald Trump may not be Hitler. Trumpism is not Nazism. However, we face an existential threat to the rule of law, to common decency, to how we treat our fellow men. Therefore, I urge you, as Ronald Reagan once said, to put this small little man into the dust bin of history. Thank you very much for your indulgence.